With Ryan Shumpert, Brent Hubbs, VolQuest.com, going around the horn as the Tennessee baseball team takes two of three from Florida this weekend. Volunteers had the opportunity, Ryan, to, to take the sweep. Bad pitch uh, by Sean Hunley, who was great on Friday night to get the save, could not close it out on Sunday. But overall, still a fantastic weekend for this baseball team. Yeah, you can never complain about an SEC series win, and you certainly can't complain about it against a rival like Florida and a team that's been as good as Florida this year and really the past decade. But it's hard to, to not think what if you take a three-run lead into the seventh inning and then a two-run lead into the eighth inning with your best guy on the mound. You feel pretty confident in that situation, and he just really wasn't sharp the whole time. He got the first out, but even then he had a 3-1 pitch that I thought was, was a ball go his way, and then he got the first out. So it wasn't his best outing. It's two times in uh, two weeks he hasn't had a great outing, but I don't think it's a huge concern as he had two good outings in between there, like you mentioned on Friday this week and then Sunday last week to close out the Alabama series. He's been good about bouncing back, being able to give, you know, play on pitch on Friday night. If he's not overworked, come back and pitch again on Sunday. Can that take a toll? Is that something that Tony Vitello has to look at and keep be mindful of as he goes through the wear and tear of the rest of this season? Yeah, I mean, I, you wonder if that has any impact, but you know, he's done that consistently that he's been they've been able to double dip him. So I don't think it's a huge concern. But the one thing I will say, kind of on that front, is I think Tennessee needs to be able to develop more bullpen pitchers. They've really just been rolling with five guys, and when you're doing that, you don't have much room for error on any of those guys, especially a guy like Hunley, who you're counting on to give you maybe four innings, five innings total on the weekend, both on, on Friday and Sunday. So you wonder if that's that's potentially something that's bothering him, but. I don't think it's it's a huge concern, and I think you'll see Tennessee continue to try to double dip with him on Friday night and then again on, Saturday, uh, again on Sunday. Tennessee got really good starting pitching, though, this weekend when you look at it. Obviously, Chad Dallas on Friday night was fantastic. Uh, Heflin gets them through five, um, you know, and then, and then um, it's McLaughlin who comes in, and, um, and then obviously they, they, they close it out in a big-time way with, with Connell last night. And then Tidwell today has given you – uh, enough on, on Sunday for what you need. So um, after a, not the best weekend at Alabama from a starting pitching standpoint, it was much, much better and really good, really solid this weekend. Yeah, I agree. Chad Dallas, like you said, was was really good on Friday. And then Heflin gave you a pretty classic Will Heflin start. He was great the first time through the lineup, ran into some trouble the second time. And that Florida lineup's really, really good, top to bottom. So there was no, no surprise there. And then you look at Tidwell, he needs to be better with the breaking ball. Florida, Florida was able to do it at the same thing Alabama did last week, just sitting on that fastball. That's what made him so lethal against Georgia and LSU early in the season as he had that working. But I continue to just be impressed with his toughness. I mean, eight hits, three walks today, consistently runners on base, consistently runners in scoring position, kept on fighting, got Tennessee out of situations. And the thing was, he gave up three runs, and it was really close to just being one run. Jacob Young got a – fly ball real high up there as the wind was blowing out to left and got that thing to push out. Wasn't he, you know, most days at the ballpark, that's going to be out. So I'm continually impressed with him. I think he, he's just going to get better and to be a true freshman and to be able to go through some adversity and continue to come back against a really good lineup uh, is very impressive. Right, so what's your overall takeaway from this series? Cause we talked about this in the preview on Friday, Tennessee quote the favored team. It didn't feel like it because of Florida's history and where they were in the preseason and we talked about Vitello kind of playing that chip on the shoulder type deal. And it was intense all weekend long. We, we know that. We knew it would be. What's your overriding takeaway from what Tennessee got done this weekend and winning this series at home? Well, it's two things. I think first, it's a team that just keeps on finding ways to win games. I mean, just incredibly impressive that they were able to fight through, you know, some not great performances. And they got the timely hitting this week that they didn't get last weekend. They were able to when they needed when Florida made mistakes in the field, which Florida made a, a good handful this weekend. Tennessee was able to bounce on them and, and really take take care of that. And then the other thing I'd say that Tennessee was able to have some offensive production without its best guys really being that good. Drew Gilbert had a really bad weekend. Jake Rucker he wasn't bad, but was certainly wasn't his best. Some of those guys that have been struggling, Evan Russell, Connor Pavoloni, Max Ferguson, they look better at the plate this week. They're starting to. Get if Tennessee good at bats now it didn't always end up in hits but those guys are, are looking better Luke Lipsius another guy he's been hitting better for a while now but he had another really good week at the plate Tennessee's lineup is, is starting to look more complete and they're starting to get 
more from the back end. The back end hasn't been a liability all year because they've been able to work competitive at bats and what you know make pitchers work against them. But they, at times it's kind of been a black hole. They haven't been able to get a whole lot of offense. That wasn't the case this weekend. They were able to step up, and, and it came at a huge time when the top of Tennessee's order wasn't great. You look at this SEC East, you got three teams, one game separates them heading into next weekend with, with the two teams tied at the top playing each other in Tennessee and Vanderbilt. This Eastern division is going to be wild. We won't even worry about the West right now. This Eastern division is going to be crazy to the finish. South Carolina's already got the three-game sweep over Florida. Tennessee's still got South Carolina to go and has Vanderbilt, obviously, ne next weekend. The, the Commodores losing a series to Georgia, which surprised everybody I know. Um, this is going to be as intense and as wild down the stretch the last six weeks of this season as anyone ever thought it was going to be, isn't it? No doubt. I mean, I, I sent a picture of the standings to, to my dad last night when Tennessee was in first place, and I said, I don't think Tennessee will end up here, but I never thought I'd see today. Tennessee was in first place in the SEC four weeks into the season. So that's really impressive. And, you know, I think the Vandy, Vanderbilt series, obviously, if you're a Tennessee fan looking at it, you're glad that Van, Vanderbilt dropped the game. But or drop the series. But, you know, I almost think that's a bad thing for Tennessee coming in the next week. You would think you're going to get Vanderbilt's best punch. And it's really, really tight up there at the top, like you said. And I think that's why this Florida series was so huge because especially Tennessee, Florida, and South Carolina, I think those three teams are all very similar. And to get the series win, to kind of separate yourself over Florida when it comes to the regional choosing time, super regional choosing time, I think that's going to be very important. And after, obviously, that really tough series against Vandy next week. And then the schedule opens up again for Tennessee for a few weeks. So I really think Tennessee, as long as they can avoid the sweep against Vanderbilt next week, is going to be able to go in deep into May, having a chance to compete for an SEC East title. Going to be interesting to watch. This team answered the bell this weekend for sure. What do they got to focus on? What do you think Vitello's message and focus is for this team this week getting ready for Vanderbilt? He clearly played the chip on the shoulder card, I think. I think that's pretty obvious. I don't know that you can play this, that card back to back weeks. Everybody knows who Vanderbilt is. What, what do you think is key for this team in Vitello this week? Yeah, I agree on the, the chip on the shoulder card. I don't think there's going to be a, a poll in the country that doesn't have Tennessee in the top five after this, this weekend. So I'm not sure how effective that will be, but I, I think it's like I mentioned earlier, I think it's figuring out some more guys that can help you in the bullpen. Now, the, you know, they have some arms. I think are solid. Connor Housley saw his first action today. He was good. Will Mabry, Jason Rackers, two guys we've talked about on here. So I think the question is continuing to develop those guys. But at the same time, I think it's going to be just could you have the confidence to pull the trigger. Because Tennessee, since the opening uh, SEC win over Georgia, every single game been very competitive. So you're not going to – you wouldn't think you're going to have any opportunity to ease those guys into a situation. So I think it's developing the bullpen a little bit more and then uh, continuing to, to be confident and getting more guys in the lineup to continue hitting well. and. I think that was a, you know, that's what I said last week. I think that was a, a very good sign what they were able to do this week and really taking advantage when they had Florida on their heels. Well, it was a great weekend of baseball at Lindsey Nelson Stadium. High intensity, some disappointment today over, you know, a, a pinch hit home run given up on just a, a bad location on, on a ball. But for the, for the most part, just an unbelievable weekend. Continued growth for this baseball team under Tony Vitello. Big opportunity coming up next week with the Vanderbilt Commodores. We'll preview that for you on Friday. Have full baseball coverage coming up tomorrow as well with the 3 2 1. That's going to do it for this edition of Around the Horn. He's Ryan Shumpert. I'm Brent Hubbs, ballquest.com.